everybody, welcome back to Teach Me to Science. My name is Saren and today we're going to be talking about titrations. Titrations are one of my favorite concepts in general chemistry. In fact, I even have a favorite titration, which is titration of NaOH with HCl using phenolphthalein indicator. In today's video about titrations, we'll be going over some key titration terms, how to set up a titration, what the equivalence point of a titration is, and then we'll look at how to analyze titration curves. Titrations can be rather confusing, so first let's define all of the terminology you'll use when talking about titrations. The three key terms to understand are titrand, titrant, and equivalence point. The titrant is the liquid that is placed within the burette. This liquid is incrementally added to the titrand, which is placed in a flask below the burette. The titrant is a liquid of known concentration, while the titrand is a liquid that is unknown in concentration. The equivalence point is the point in the titration where the amount of titrant you've added in moles is equivalent to the amount of moles of titrand which were initially in the flask. Another thing I want to clarify is what an analyte is. An analyte is simply your molecule of interest. So if you want to know what the concentration of chloride ions is, then chloride ions are your analyte. Now let's look at how you would set up a titration. A titration is a laboratory technique used to determine the concentration of an unknown substance called your analyte. An example of when you would need to use a titration is when you're in the lab and you have an unknown substance. For example, if I have old HCl that's sitting on the counter and I don't know what its concentration is, I can titrate it with NaOH, find the equivalence point, and then find my concentration of HCl. But to do this, you would have to know how to set up a titration in the lab. Here I've drawn a picture of a typical titration setup. This includes a burette, which holds your titrant, an Erlenmeyer flask that holds your analyte, and a stopcock which controls the amount of titrant added. Now let's talk about the equivalence point. Titrations can be done by using a color changing indicator or by measuring changes in pH. When the pH or the color changing indicator change significantly, you've reached the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide are equivalent. At the equivalence point, the pH and the pKa are also equivalent. Now let's take a look at a typical titration curve. On one side of the graph is the unit pH. This can be measured using a pH meter or by using a color changing indicator. On the other side of the graph is volume of titrant added. This could also be labeled as reaction progress. It's important to note that the pH being measured here is the pH of the titrand or the liquid found in the Erlenmeyer flask. Initially, our titrand is very acidic. This means that there is more hydronium present in solution than hydroxide. As more hydroxide is added, the reaction between the two makes the pH more and more basic. When the moles of the acid in the flask and the moles of the base that have been added are equal, we are at the equivalence point. If we continue to add base past the equivalence point, then our solution will become more and more basic. Initially, you can see that the pH is not changing drastically. This is because the solution is acting as a buffer. At the equivalence point, we see a rapid change in pH. This is because the buffering capacity has been completely used up. If we add more base after we've reached the equivalence point, then there will be more hydroxide in solution, which will continue to increase the pH. That's all I have for this video on titration curves. If you could, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.